Eventually, even the fat controller gave up. We shall take away your rails, he said, and leave you here for always and always and always. There watching him was the fat controller. What are you doing here, Thomas, he asked. I brought Edward's trucks, Thomas answered. Why did you come so fast? I didn't mean to. I was pushed, said Thomas. You've got a lot to learn about trucks then, little Thomas. After pushing them about here for a few weeks, you'll know almost as much about them as Edward. Then you'll be a really useful engine. Next morning, the fat controller spoke severely to him. If you can't behave, I shall take away your red coat and have you painted blue. James didn't like that at all. Meanwhile, all the passengers hurried to the booking office. We want our money back, they shouted. But the fat controller climbed on a trolley and blew the guard's whistle so loudly that they all stopped to look at him. Then he promised them a new train at once. He climbed up and peered in. Then he came down. Excuse me, sir, please look in the tank and tell me what you see. Certainly, Inspector, replied the fat controller. He clambered up, looked in, and nearly fell off in surprise. Inspector, he whispered, can you see fish? Gracious goodness me, how did the fish get there, driver? We must have fished them from the river with our bucket, replied Thomas's driver. Well, Thomas, so you and your driver have been fishing, but fish don't suit you. We must get them out. They all took turns at fishing in Thomas's tank, while the fat controller looked on and told them how to do it. He moved slowly forward to jam the table, but he couldn't stop himself and slithered into a ditch. Ooh, she hissed. Get me out! Get me out! Not a hope, said his driver and fireman. You're stuck, you silly great engine. Don't you understand that? They telephoned the fat controller. So Gordon didn't want to take the special train and ran into a ditch. What's that you say? The special's waiting? Tell Edward to take it, please. And Gordon? Oh, leave him where he is. We haven't time to bother with him now. Psst, said Cranky meekly. You've blown the main now, matey, said Salty. The engines were trapped. You're gonna get into trouble, sang Bill and Ben. Sir Topham Hatt was in his office being measured for a new suit. When he heard the news, he left immediately for the docks. Sir Topham Hatt knew that any delay at the docks could cause trouble. You have made a terrible mess, Cranky, he said sternly. I'm sorry, sir, Cranky whispered. You engines will have to stay here tonight until Harvey clears up this mess in the morning. Cranky's heart sank as Salty uttered those fateful words. That reminds me of a story. Yeah. After Percy was lowered back onto the ground, the manager was very cross. You have caused confusion and delay, he said. I'll have to report this to Sir Topham Hatt. That night, Sir Topham Hatt spoke severely to Percy. I'm very disappointed in you, Percy, he said. You know it's against the rules to go on to the tipper's loading ramp. Sorry, sir, Percy said sadly, but it wasn't my fault. It's because those diesels made me a middle engine. Nevertheless, you will shunt freight cars in the yards until I can get to the bottom of this. Bah! said James. Help! Grease and oil, Diesel sulked as the trucks laughed and laughed. <laughs> Sir Topham Hatt looked down crossly at Diesel. I thought you would be a proper dockyard Diesel, but I was wrong, he said. Can you make up for lost time, Henry? Oh, yes, sir, Henry replied happily. One day, Rusty returned late to the quarry. Sir Topham Hatt was cross. Sorry, sir, Rusty's driver said. 
We were helping Reneus and Scarloe. I know you like helping Reneus and Scarloe, but their line is in bad condition. It takes too much of your time, said Sir Topham Hatt. I am going to shut it down. Rusty was upset. But what will Reneus and Scarloe do, Rusty asked. They will come and work with you here at the quarry. He had made up his mind. There was nothing Rusty could do. Bloiler. Duncan felt foolish and very wet. When Sir Topham had arrived, he spoke severely to Duncan. You have not been a responsible engine, he said. Your impatience has caused confusion and delay, and you owe these engines an apology. Sorry, Duncan said to Rusty, Reneus, and Scarloe. Once you have been repaired, Sir Topham had said, you will work the incline until you learn to be patient and careful. Yes, sir, said Duncan. Look at that, laughed a boy. The back engine must be the strongest and the best. Gordon was embarrassed. Sir Topham Hatt spoke severely to Gordon. You have said rude things about Edward. He proved today that he is useful, reliable, and very helpful. Gordon felt very ashamed. Him to inspect his quarry engines. He found that Mavis and Bill were in fine working order. Unfortunately, Ben, Sir Topham had said, your buffers are damaged. You must report to the engine works immediately for a new set of buffers. Mavis, you will have to work with Bill until Ben returns. Yes, sir, replied Mavis, and Sir Topham Hatt drove away. Sir Topham Hatt say, he groaned. He found out soon enough. Well, Gordon, said Sir Topham Hatt, you wanted to show Salty a thing or two, and you've certainly done that. You've shown him how silly it is to ignore go-slow signs. Sorry, sir, said Gordon, and he let out a sad whoosh of steam. When Sir Topham Hatt arrived and saw Bill's broken buffers, he was not happy. You behaved badly, Bill, Sir Topham Hatt said. Do you have anything to say for yourself? Yes, sir. I'm sorry, sir, said Bill. Before you get new buffers, Sir Topham had continued, I want you to think about what it means to be a responsible, reliable engine. Yes, sir, answered Bill meekly. We didn't think you were really sick, added Percy. Go back and collect Henry's freight cars, said Sir Topham Hatt sternly. Yes, sir, whispered Thomas. Arthur was upset. His spotless record was ruined. Oh, Arthur, what a mess, puffed Thomas. Sir Topham Hatt was very annoyed. What happened here? The troublesome trucks were singing. I told them to stop, but they made me go too fast. Hatt was waiting. Fergus, explain yourself. I ran away. It's scary here. Diesel told this storm has caused confusion and delay. Remove this tree immediately. Shivering. At last, Thomas arrived with Sir Topham Hatt. He was very cross indeed. Whistles are for safety, he told Percy, not for playing games. You must only use your whistle when the time is right. He reminds me of the sea. Thomas's driver telephoned for help. And soon Harvey was clearing the tracks. Thomas wondered what Sir Topham Hatt would say. He found out soon enough. You have caused confusion and delay, said Sir Topham Hatt. You must learn to be more safe. Yes, sir. Sorry, sir, Thomas puffed sadly. But Sir Topham Hatt was very cross. He spoke sternly to Gordon. Why are you fooling around, Gordon? He boomed. You must go quickly, or the children will miss the boat, and that will never do. Yes, sir, said Gordon sadly. Remember, added Sir Topham Hatt, you are the fastest engine on the island. 
This made Gordon feel proud. To Tidmouth's sheds. Sir Topham Hatt was waiting. He did not look happy. Emily, you must take Thomas to get his snowplow fitted at once, said Sir Topham Hatt sternly. Thomas, you must learn to listen. Thomas felt bad. He didn't know it was Sir Topham Hatt who wanted him to wear his snowplow. Emily felt bad too. She didn't like seeing Thomas in trouble. I'm sorry, sir, she said. I forgot to tell Thomas it was your idea. You mean I have two engines that don't listen, boomed Sir Topham Hatt. Well, I never. Emily, you must take Thomas to get his snowplow fitted at once. He was clearing away the tar wagons when Sir Topham Hatt arrived aboard Thomas. Where is Percy, he said. He has caused confusion and delay. Gordon didn't know. Uh, he just left very quickly, sir. So there would be no fresh bread that day. Sir Topham Hatt was cross. This means I won't have any toast or muffins for breakfast. If you are late again, you will have to do the black lock run instead of James. Sir Topham Hatt came to see Emily. Emily, you have caused confusion and delay, Sir Topham Hatt said. Now you are to take over the black lock run. He was getting lots of phone calls. The sheep had knocked over lots of market stalls. The children had seen all the farm animals. And the classroom was full of chickens. At last, Thomas puffed into Tidmouth's sheds. He was looking forward to a nice, long sleep. Then Sir Topham had arrived. Thomas, you have caused confusion and delay, he said. Sir Topham had told Thomas what had happened. Thomas was upset. No one was hurt. Sir Topham Hatt was very cross. I asked you to teach Percy, he said sternly, not show off all afternoon. Yes, sir, sorry, sir, Gordon puffed quietly. Henry got back to the sheds. Sir Topham Hatt was waiting for him. There have been complaints, he said sternly. Passengers are not like logs. You must be gentle. Yes, sir said Henry sadly. Arrived on board Thomas. What are you doing, Henry? asked Sir Topham Hatt. You are causing confusion and delay. Henry told him all about the wishing tree. Wishing trees don't run railways, said Sir Topham Hatt. That's my job. Gordon just needed some repairs. He'll be back tomorrow. He was very cross. You should have waited, said Sir Topham Hatt sternly. And now you have caused confusion and delay. You left the brake coach, stranded Bertie's passengers, and bumped your coaches. You must learn to be more patient. Emily knew Sir Topham Hatt was right. She felt very bad. She was only trying to be as good as Gordon. I'm sorry, sir, she said sadly. That's no ghost, said Percy. That's Emily. The engines didn't feel scared anymore, but they did feel foolish. Sir Topham had arrived wearing his pajamas. What is all this fuss and bother, he boomed. It has caused confusion and delay. But sir, cried Thomas, the flatbeds were rattling. And we heard moaning, said Emily. And groaning, added Thomas. Sir Topham Hatt looked at Harry and Bert. Do you know anything about this? He asked sternly. It was us, sir, Bert mumbled. For your punishment, you go back and collect the iron at once, said Sir Topham Hatt. Yes, sir, said Harry and Bert, and they rumbled away. Thomas, this train is late, he said crossly. And why are you pulling it? Where is Edward? 
Thomas didn't want to get Edward into trouble. He had to think of an excuse. Uh, but, but, well, Edward took on the wrong sort of coal, sir. The wrong sort of coal, booms Sir Topham Hatt. What nonsense, Thomas! I'll find out what Edward has to say about this later. Sir Topham Hatt was very cross. He gave Thomas another job to do. Yes, sir, said Thomas.